the realities of building an online business are tough sometimes. And I had a situation happen this week that is an example of that. And it's, I guess, a demonstration of how unexpectedly things can change. I'm going to tell you the story on this episode of Live, Build, Change. Live your faith, build your business, and change your world. This is Live, Build, Change. If you have been listening to the Live, Build, Change podcast for any length of time, first of all, I want to thank you for investing the time that it takes to download, listen, subscribe, whatever it is that you've done to make sure that you hear these episodes. I recognize that there are a lot of great podcast episodes out there, lots of good content and actionable things you can take. And honestly, a lot of people with a lot more experience than me that you can listen to. So I don't take it lightly that you invest your time, and I want you to know that I appreciate it. Well, this episode of Live, Build, Change is a little bit different because I'm just talking to you off the cuff about something that took place this very week that I'm recording. Right now, it is April 6th, and what I am about to tell you happened on April 4th, so just a few days ago. And here's what it is. I have mentioned throughout the course of this podcast so far a course that I created to help mortgage loan originators study for an exam that they're required to take in order to become licensed as a mortgage loan originator. It was called PassTheSafeExam.com. And that course was my first real success when it comes to building an online course, was bringing in somewhere around $4,000 per month to my business budget. And if you are an astute listener, you've noticed I've been using past tense on this <laughs> because on Tuesday, I received a very formal sounding and honestly kind of scary sounding letter from one of the organizations that is involved with regulating the particular exam that mortgage loan originators have to take. And the letter essentially said, your site is using copyrighted material and could be compromising the integrity of our testing process, we insist that you take your site down immediately and that you answer these questions about where you got your content. Just let that sink in for a second. That's what I had to do when I read the letter. I was just like... Oh my goodness, is this real? Could this really be the case? And the way that it turns out, it is legitimate. The claims that they're making are not true from my perspective. There is nothing in the course that I took from their materials. Everything I took to create the course, I either created out of my own mind or I used other free resources that are on the internet and made them into my own language and, you know, use them as a resource essentially to study and to learn myself how I wanted to teach the course. So their claim is false. There was nothing in my course that was actually their material. And so I could have fought it, I feel, and I would have had a case. But the sticking point is that I can't really prove that that's the case. If there are things in my course, such as the way test questions are worded or you know, because it has uh, practice tests inside the, the study methods course that I created. If the wording of the test questions is similar, or if the way that I explain something happens to be similar to the way that they do it, I wouldn't have any way of proving that I, in fact, did not take their materials. And so what I did is I responded to the letter and I told them I have shut down the website, which I have done, and that I've taken every video off of YouTube, which I have done. And that I wanted to explain where my materials came from. And essentially, I told them my materials all came from my head. You know, I created it as I was studying for the course myself. I created it with screenshot videos of myself doing practice tests that my online course provider had provided for me as a student and explained over those videos in my own voice how I was studying, how I was understanding the questions, 
what it was that I was seeing there and how I was interpreting it to answer the question rightly. So in essence, I was teaching study skills of how I study to answer these particular types of questions. Now, something that you should know about this particular test is it's my understanding that they change the questions all the time, that they do so on purpose to keep people from being able to walk out of there with a handful of questions written down or in their own head and then pass those along to others. So it's not like any questions I have on my practice tests are likely still on the test at all. But maybe that happened. I don't know. Maybe they have a rotating bin of questions and some of the questions I'm using are similar. I mean, it's possible. And so all that just to say, I did not see that there was a way I could win this battle and prove myself innocent of the charges. But I thought as a step of integrity, the best thing to do would be to take the course offline immediately to explain myself and my motives, which I did. I explained my motive was to help people. It's clear that I could have charged more for what my course was worth because it's worth way more, but I didn't. It was starting at $25, pay what you want. And most people paid $25 and raved about the course and said that it was worth much more. So I'm hoping that my step of integrity will prove to them that I did not mean to compromise their testing at all and that I don't intend to continue doing so if I have. Now, all of this, just to say this, business changes all the time. (laughs) Setbacks occur. I mean, if you think about the significance of this development, we have just taken, we meaning my wife and I, we have just taken a $4,000 a month at least hit to our budget. That's a business budget, but it's still our budget because we're managing it and using it for not only paying a team of people who work for us, but also paying our own household expenses and and salary and things like that. So a $4,000 a month hit to my budget is something that, you know, it's not easy to take. And believe me, I did not take it well initially when I realized there's really nothing I can do but remove this course from the internet and immediately stop receiving income from it. And that's exactly what's happened. And that is honestly not easy to take. I didn't handle it well at first. I was angry. I was going to write this real aggressive letter back. And, you know, the more that I typed, the more I realized, you know, that's not the best way to handle it, especially from the perspective of a a Christ follower. You know, I wanted to be humble. I wanted to be careful. I wanted to consider that there are people on the other end of this transaction. And most likely the people that I would be dealing directly with are not the ones who have made the decision. They're just the messengers. They're the administrative staff who'll receive. And so I had to consider all of those things. And believe me, I'm not a perfect example of what it looks like to be a Christian in the business world. But I can tell you this, I've been walking with Christ for long enough and the Holy Spirit has had his way in my life enough in terms of of convicting me, beating me up, of showing me where I'm wrong in things. And I say beating me up in an affectionate way. You know, it's that kind of discipline that we all need from time to time. I've been doing that long enough to know the bad way, the the aggressive way, the the angry way is not Christ's way. I had to cool my jets. I had to stop and think about it and let wisdom prevail and develop a course of action that was wisest. And so in this case, I just determined it was wisest to shut down that course. Now, it's ironic that I'm publishing this episode to tell you about this right after the previous episode at livebuildchange.com slash 20, where I walked you step-by-step what I did to create that course. I mean, that's one of the courses I created, but here's the irony in maybe a positive sort of way. What I've said to my wife now and what I've said to myself since realizing that that source of income is gone is this. I've done it once. I can do it again. I mean, now I have the experience. I have the smarts. I know that this will work to create an online course of some sort. And I've had great success at it. So I know that I can turn right around and figure out how to do this again. But I've also learned some lessons about how to do it again. And lesson number one is I'm not going to do it in a way or a niche or a subject matter that is in any way connected to the government or any kind of government agency. I I have to laugh as I say it. 
because, you know, I've learned my lesson on that. You know, they at any time can pull the plug. And so for longevity and for the long game, I need to keep in mind that I need to have this as unencumbered by any kind of outside regulation or stipulation as possible so that this kind of thing won't be likely to happen in the future. Now, even if I do that, there's the possibility that some law could change and it suddenly regulates what it is I've chosen to do in my online course. And I now have to change things significantly or something like that. I mean, that kind of thing is always possible, but having it tied directly to the government in the way that it was, not that it was in any way affiliated with the government, but the government has the right to regulate the kinds of things that I'm doing because it has to do with their testing methods and it has to do with their laws and regulations surrounding mortgage loan originators. So that's the lesson learned for me in this is that I'll create another online course. You bet I will. And I perhaps will take the other one that I have, which is audacity for podcasting.com and amp it up some, figure out some marketing using Facebook advertising or something like that to really amp up the sales of that course. But whatever I do, I will build it as independently from any outside regulation or sources that I can. Now, I suspect that anybody that is listening to this podcast episode and tries to imagine what it would be like to take a $4,000 hit to your income overnight is trying to imagine how do you live with that? Well, I bless God, first of all, that he's provided other sources of income for me. And that is one of the reasons that I've talked about in previous episodes, the importance of not having all your financial eggs in one basket, because this doesn't only happen in online business. I mean, in just the world of business in general, you can get laid off. Your position could be phased out. Your company could go under. And suddenly you'll find yourself in the same position that I found myself in this week. But because I didn't have all my financial eggs in one basket, I've got other business ventures going on. I was able to absorb this. Now, it's not going to be easy to absorb. I'm paying a team of people. I was actually just in the process of doing some interviewing and impossible hiring of new writers for my show notes team. And I had to stop that entire process. I had to reach out to all these candidates who had done all this work to jump through hoops and satisfy me that they were good candidates for this position and tell them I've had a unrelated business thing kind of go south and I've got to stop for a second and figure that out. And then I can come back to this. And it's actually going to be more than a second. It's going to be months until I can recoup this cost. And so my initial plan right now is to crank up my podcast fast track business as high as I can and make up for this deficit in my overall income through that business. But that doesn't solve my problem because now my eggs in baskets are more consolidated. If you understand what I mean, now more of my income is dependent on one source than I care for. And so I'm going to start developing another online course. I don't know what it will be about. I don't know what aspect of the internet world I will do that on. I'm considering even creating a life and business coaching aspect to my business. In fact, I'm already doing that with Live, Build, Change, but I haven't made it real public yet. And it may be that I decide to build those things out in a course sort of a format or in a uh, ongoing subscription sort of format on a monthly basis to coach people in life coaching and in business coaching. I don't know exactly what shape or form it's going to take, but you can be certain I don't like this situation with so many of my financial eggs in one basket. So that's another lesson learned. I've got some observations about this whole experience that I'd like to share from you from a faith perspective, but on the spiritual side of things. There are quite a few different things that I've thought about this. Uh, number one, I've been very thankful for a supportive wife. A few episodes ago, I talked about getting your spouse on board. And these are the exact kinds of reasons you need to have your spouse on board. Because if my wife did not believe in, first of all, the Lord's hand on our lives. Secondly, my ability to follow his leadership and build a business 
or, or multiple businesses uh, that can support us and provide income for us. And if I, she did not believe in the process that we're in and understand how internet business works, she could have responded very negatively to this whole thing and been upset and panicked and, you know, had all kinds of reactions, but she didn't. I, I thank God for my wife and for the maturity in Christ that she has. And all of that makes me realize, and I hope helps you to realize how vital the live part of the live, build, change philosophy is. It's live your faith. You see, that faith has got to be vitally strong if you are going to endure the ups and downs of business. Now, I know there are people out there who aren't Christ followers who, quote unquote, endure the ups and downs of business. I totally get that. I'm not saying you can't get through it, but I'm saying we have weathered this storm so far. It's only been two days, but we have weathered this storm so far very well. And by that, I mean, without worry, without a sense of panic, with a complete sense of peace that this is all in God's plan and it's all going to go according to his schedule of how things should turn. And that, in fact, it's probably going to turn out for the better for us. We've been able to do that because our faith is strong. And I want to encourage you to not hear me bragging on me or my wife. Please hear me saying God is faithful to guide those who are in turn faithful to be guided by him. My wife and I have practiced this. It's kind of like those business success stories you hear out there that seem to be an overnight success, but they never are. Those people have worked hard at that business for many years prior to the success. And our faith, though you may be listening to this situation and saying, oh, I I can't believe you acted that way. You sure sound high and mighty. Please understand This is not a high and mighty thing. This is a thing where my wife and I have been humbling ourselves under the hand of God for many, many years, and he has provided the strength to endure this kind of thing. You see, our confidence is not in ourselves. Our confidence is in him. And I hope none of that sounds proud or arrogant or anything like that. I'm just trying to state matter of factly how this faith thing really works in real life. It's not that God magically, miraculously, supernaturally just pours out this bucket of faith on you and you suddenly have peace. Like anything in life, God has a part in it. Amen, he does. He's the one who gives us faith in the first place to believe in him as the savior of the world, as the one who has redeemed us to be his people. But we also have a part to play. As James so eloquently says in the book of James, faith is has to have works that go with it. And oftentimes that's hard work. It's the hard work of sticking to your morning devotions. By the way, let me put a plug here for the Morning Mindset edition of the podcast. It's in the same podcast feed. If you're not listening to those every day, please understand it's not the only thing you should be doing. It's not the only thing you can do. You may have a method or a system worked out that actually works for you. But if you need some kind of boost in the morning to help you get going for the day in a way that puts your mind on Christ, those morning mindsets are there for you. And it's because this live portion of the live, build faith movement is so vital that I do that. But to get back on track here, it's that hard work of sticking to a prayer system or a prayer pattern in your life. It's the hard work of sticking to your daily devotions. And I say daily because I know we need it daily. It's the hard work of surrounding yourself with people of like faith and like persuasion who are able to encourage you as you encourage them in return. It's the hard work of getting a life coach or a business coach who is faith-based and can help you keep your head on straight and keep your discipline in place and hold you accountable to the things that you believe God wants you to accomplish in your life. Those are the elements of hard work that go into creating the kind of faith that can sustain and can endure when a hardship like what I've described happens to you. It's not by accident. It's not because, you know, I'm something special. I'm not. I'm sure there are going to be some seasons in this part of our lives that we're walking right now, where this is going to be extremely hard on a practical daily level. And we're going to fight emotions of discouragement. We're going to fight being down. We're going to fight regret and second guessing ourselves 
and wishing we had done something differently. And, you know, this whole thing isn't over, actually, because the scary letter that we received said, provide all this information to us, send it back to us, which I did. And we will let you know if further action is needed. There may be the need for us to appear personally in front of a board, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all this intimidating sounding stuff could still happen. But the point I'm trying to drive home here is this. If you don't have the live part of live, build, change down, and you're trying to do the build part, it is inevitable. Just like I experienced this week, you are going to hit something in your journey to build a business and to eventually change your world that is going to challenge that faith. And my hope for you is that you take that seriously now before the challenge starts, that you build a solid foundation of faith underneath your life so that you are living day to day in a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, so that you are living day to day in a way that fuels you and sustains you and actually builds spiritual muscle so that when the hardships come and the difficulties come, you don't crash and burn. You find yourself with a sense of peace, with a perspective of confidence that your God is on the throne and he is able to take care of you and that this situation did not catch him by surprise. In fact, he has ordained it. That's what I believe. I believe this whole four years I've been running my past the safe exam course and the day of April 4th, when we received the letter and had to shut down the course, were everyone ordained by God. They're his plan. They're his good work in my life. And I have to convince myself of that sometimes so that I can trust him rather than doubt him. And that is what Christian faith really is. It's a mindset issue. I have to believe because what I believe will be lived out. And so it's up to me to choose what is it I will believe. And I choose for one to believe my God is good and working all things for my good and for his glory even when it's a terrible thing, like a loss of $4,000 instantly one morning through an email letter that I received from the government. I am so thankful once again that you're listening to the Live, Build, Change podcast. If there's anything I can do, if you have any kind of questions about the Live, Build, Change movement or any way that I can help you, reach out to me, Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y at livebuildchange.com. And I would be happy to correspond with you and chat back and forth about what you got on your mind. And if you have a business idea or a product idea or something like that, and you think you would like to have kind of a personal live coaching session, so to speak, right here on the podcast and would like to record that, I would be interested in talking with you and finding out what you're working on and see if it's a good fit to air here on the Live, Build, Change podcast. And finally, one last thing, I am beginning to add life coaching and business coaching to my business practices here through the Live, Build, Change website. You can go to livebuildchange.com. And if you cannot find a coaching page on the website, that means I'm still building it out. Just contact me through the say hi link there at the top of the podcast page, and I will get back to you and we can start discussing what that might look like. Hey, I am excited that you're here. I'm excited this movement is growing. The community on Facebook is starting to generate lots of buzz and conversation about various topics. If you want to join us there, go to livebuildchange.com slash FB, and you can find out how to join the Live Build Change community on Facebook. Thanks so much for listening. I will talk with you tomorrow on the morning mindset edition of the Live Build Change podcast. Mm-hmm.